This is the world's smallest Lego Steve. But Minecraft has a little bit more than just this guy. I'm gonna attempt to fix this by making a tiny version of every Minecraft biome out of Lego bricks. And at the end, I'll populate it with a bunch ah. of custom micro minifigures. Usually Minecraft sets are pretty darn simple, but the micro worlds are a little bit more challenging. Three times as challenging, with parts, scale, and biomes all being problems that I'll have to face later. Now starting with the savannah, slow down there. Did I, did I just a minute ago say later? Face later. Because I lied, I meant right now. According to the Minecraft website, there are 19 biomes, and fortunately, LEGO has already produced four sets containing plains, forest, hills, taiga, snowy plains, river, nether, and the end, leaving 11 left to do myself. And if you're upset that I'm not making the deep, lukewarm ocean or the other 60 plus sub biomes, I can't say I'm sorry to disappoint. But if you're interested and you subscribe, I might do the other 50 odd some sub biomes in a future video. That's including everybody's favorite, the windswept gravelly hills. Because of an old event promo, I know the size of one Minecraft block is two plates tall. The two to one ratio can be further validated with the different structures being scaled perfectly. Wait, well, hold on. I don't, I don't understand. Why is it, why is it not fitting? Oh, yeah, I failed math. The scale is right as long as you don't want to use the buildings as intended, as buildings. How do you make your houses in Minecraft? Do you make it big enough to go inside or big enough for mobs to fit? How about big enough to actually use? Congratulations, you're wrong and bad at math. Yeah. Not sure how the villagers are gonna pull through at night. Well, without breaking kneecaps, of course. Actually, getting mobs to that golden two-plate scale with a minimum of three plates just for the head will never do. But one plate over looks and works far better. And that feeds us into the next challenge, the stupid amount of parts I need. The micro worlds, unsurprisingly, when compared to other sets, aren't all that crazy big. Those sets, however, are some of the smallest on the market and the micro sets use about four times the parts. Next to something with a similar piece count, that's just lunch. With the sets being so little, it makes a normal Steve minifigure look like a kaiju. A reason why these are so densely packed with parts is because I'm gonna have to plaster hundreds of these little tiles all over the top to make it look Minecrafty, which based on the sets that I've built, it's not gonna be a fun time. <laughs> but I can't can't really put it off. I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. I'm the Savannah color scheme was kind of tricky. This color would have worked a lot better representing the dull landscapes of a more arid climate, but that piece hasn't been made in olive green. In order to differentiate it from the plains or taiga biome, I had to go with a slightly different shade that's kind of a little too vibrant. To distract you from that, and to make it slightly less boring, I threw it on a ravine, where it would also be home to a cave spider. This printed plate being originally used in sets as monster spawner is perfect for the scale we're working in. Now the villager has a little, a little no, look at him go. The jungle has a number of unique locations and I wanted to represent that. In doing so, I broke the universal rule of keep it simple stupid. The bamboo forest should definitely have its own plate separate from the normal jungle trees. The cocoa beans and the tall grass help sells it a little bit more, but all that is undone with my poor attempt at those vines. Not all of the Lego colors translate super well into Minecraft blocks. The white seems a bit too bright. Let me know if you think it works. Maybe it wouldn't be as noticeable if that skeleton I made from another set's monster spawner wasn't also an inhabitant of the Badlands. Because the mine shaft was made for a normal size Steve, it looks a bit oversized. It would definitely be improved if there was just a little bit more mountain above or if I shrunk it by a block, but that would require effort. <laughs> A ton of cherry groves seem to generate all over hills, and outside of the pink petals replacing flowers, not much is different from a normal plains biome. Pretty though. I feel a little regret not making the old style swamp. Not just because that's what's more familiar, but replicating the tangled mess of a mangrove tree and not making it look like I accidentally went too far with the girth slider is very difficult. Without anything else, it feels a little empty and it definitely would have benefited from some extra breathing room. There is a better blue color to represent the ice of the ice spikes, but this one, this one works, and it's different enough to tell the frozen water apart from the frozen water towers. Probably. I think. The first thought I had was build a temple, but there's no way anyone could make a proper temple with such little room. A well, on the other hand, could just barely, almost look good if nothing else was there. Like a cactus, or dead bushes, or villagers. Both the beach and stony shore offered some interesting problems. The first one Lego has always struggled with and that's representing water. The other issue is working with depth and obviously filling any empty space with loose bricks would be a little silly. Two of the options I thought might work is either A, do what Lego do and use my imagination, AKA leave it completely empty. The other thought was to put a blue plate stretching across the whole top and tile it over. With this, the benefits are real nice. It obviously looks like water. No one will mistake it for a weird cliffside. There's also a lot more room for detail. For example, if you want to change the water type or when two different biomes meet, it's an additional option to work with. The downside to this approach is when you move away from the shoreline. The ocean doesn't have a ton of tall structures just jutting out all over the place. If I wanted to put water over my ocean ruin here, that would require some support from a nearby cliff. So for now, I'm going with a much less nice 
imagination route. Guess that means that this oversized guardian I made using the faceplate from this poor fella is gonna have to get used to pretending. Or flopping. The flopping also works. Being all on its lonesome, the mushroom fields almost deserve pity. Not from me though. The two defining features for this godforsaken pile in the ocean are the giant mushrooms and the puke purple dirt. The grayish hue is meant to be mycelium. It's just too bad Lego has never made it a priority to also recreate the fungi. And using gray, while a little more accurate than what I did, it too easily blends into the same gray used for stone. The mushrooms are fun, though. Now that I've finally finished all the biomes, I can populate it with some micro mobs. Steve, a creeper, villagers, zombies, pigs, ghasts, zombie pigmen, endermen, and end dragons all come from the sets. The zombie Steve and creeper all need a little reductive surgery and a change of clothes. Both pig and man are staying the same. The zombie pigman's face is printed on a brick, so making it any shorter would look weird. Plus, if it wasn't good enough for Mokiang to keep it in the game, then why bother at all? which could also be said about these. While buying more parts, I also got enough villager faces for each village type. The plains, desert, jungle, savanna, snow, swamp, taiga, and I even made everybody's favorite, Nitwit. A really neat technique was used to make the gas work. The face was printed upside down on a brick and it looked great, though technically it is undersized for the scale. But I'm not sure if making it the right size looks better, you decide. Endermen are already super tall, but this one might be a little too tall. I tried out a few different options, but I'm not sure what to go with. If you have any ideas to make it look better, let me know because this guy's proportions at this scale are very difficult to figure out. The spider is next to perfect, but the guardian and skeleton need some work. The fish's size would make more sense as an elder guardian, but without any faces to use, I'll keep it like this for now. The sniper is a little too tall, though if it's any shorter, the bow becomes a problem. Maybe I'll try another technique in the future, but for now, I'm disarming him. In these two sets, the Guardian Battle and End Arena, there are a few more face prints that we can use for mobs. The shulker can easily be miniaturized into a micro open shulker. It, as well as the axolotl faces, can also be used for random player heads. The same can be done here to make a player skin. Using the Mario mustache piece from the question block, it's another thing to liven up the build. For all those Minecraft no-lifers out there that spend way too much time watching info dumps cosplaying as a YouTube video, this one's for you. A normal zombie minifigure kinda works as an unused giant, but there's still no ant in it. Finally, the emboss caps off the micro mobs. Out of the box, it is barely recognizable as the Ender Dragon, so here's my attempt to make it look less emaciated. Bulking up the body allows for actual legs, and not whatever that growth is supposed to be. The neck no longer looks like it's wearing a choker, and the tail not only has articulation, but it's square, like everything else in Minecraft. Now that's much more of a dragon. It's not 100% block accurate, but it looks far more imposing than that skinny twink over there. The biomes are done and full of mobs, even though I used thousands of parts for this. Ironically, the micro world is still tiny. But if you'd like to see me expand on all of this, making an even bigger world, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. Or not, I'm not your mom.